Hey, good, good evening, everybody. And welcome to our Wednesday night prayer meeting. I'm glad to see those of us who are here. Uh, the Bible did say one or two, and I see a lot more than that. So let's give God some praise tonight. And I'm sure that he has something in store for each one wherever we are. Let us stand as we open with a word of prayer, please. Father, honor God, we come before you this evening for another refreshing of your word. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be here with each of us and will minister unto our hearts where the need is. We thank you so much for keeping us so far throughout the week. And as we come and we fellowship one with another, may we gain another push, another strength, another bit of energy to take us through to the Sabbath. Thank you again for your love, for your grace, and for your mercies. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's start with hymn number 205. Hymn number 205. Mm. is fast approaching Jesus soon will come to take his faithful and happy children to their promised home oh we see the gleams of the golden morning passing through this night of gloom oh we see the gleams of the golden morning that will the gospel summons will soon be carried to the nations round. The bridegroom then will cease to tarry and the trumpets. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning passing through this night of gloom. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning that will burst the tomb. Attended by all the shining angels down the flaming sky, the judge will come and will take his people where they will not die. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning passing through this night of gloom. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning that will burst the tomb. There those loved ones who have long been parted will all meet that day. The tears of those who are broken hearted will be wiped away. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning passing through this night of gloom. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning that will burst the tomb. Hymn number 595. Every lamp be burning bright, the darkest hour is nearing, the darkest hour of us long night before the Lord's appearing. Then trim your lamps, my brethren dear, then trim your lamps with godly fear, the master's coming, draw it near, let every lamp be burning. Though thousand calmly slumber on the last 
with message burning, we'll rest our living faith upon His promise of returning. Then trim your lamps, my brethren dear, then trim your lamps with godly feather. Master's coming, draw it near, let every lamp be burning. His word a lamp, His truth a guide, we cannot be mistaken. Though dangers arise on every side, we shall not be forsaken. Then trim your lamps, my brethren dear, then trim your lamps with godly fear. The Master's coming, draw it and let every lamp be burning. Then let good works with faith appear to help the world around us. Obedience brings the blessings near when faith has firmly bound us. Then trim your lamps, my brethren dear, then trim your lamps with godly fear. The Master's coming, draw it near, let every lamp be burning. Hymn number 602. Oh, brother, be faithful, soon Jesus will come, for whom we have waited so long. Oh, soon we shall enter a glorious home and join in the conqueror's song. Oh, brother, be faithful, for why should we prove unfaithful to him who has shown? Such deep, such abounded and infinite love Who died to redeem us his own O oh, brother, be faithful, the city of gold Prepared for the good and the blessed Is waiting his portals of pause to unfold And welcome thee into thy rest then, brother, prove faithful, not long shall we stay in weariness here and for long. Time's dark night of sorrow is wearing away, we haste to the glorious morn. O oh, brother, be faithful, he soon will descend, creation's omnipotent king. While legions of angels his chariot attend And palm wreaths of victory bring O oh, brother, be faithful and soon shall thou hear Thy Saviour pronounce thy glad word Well done, faithful servant, thy title is clear To enter the joy of thy Lord Number four, three, four. We speak of the realms of the blessed, that country so bright and so fair, and of all its glories confessed. But what must it be to be there? We speak of its pathway of gold, its wall that the jewels so rare, its wonders and pleasures untold. But what must it be to be there? We speak of its freedom from sin, from sorrow, temptation, and care, from trials without and within. But what must it be to be there? We speak of its service of love, of the road which the glorified way, of the church of the firstborn above. But what must it be to be there? All morning it is all at an end, when there is my life giving word. We 
see the new city descend up right as a dark wall. The city so holy and clean, no sorrow can breathe in the air, no gloom of affliction or sin, no shadow of evil is there. Now, miss temptation and woe, for heaven my spirit prepare, and shortly I also shall know and feel what it is to be there. Then all the bright fields we shall roam In glory celestial and fair With saints and with angels at home And Jesus himself will be there Let's try hymn number 442 Sweet are the tidings that greet the pilgrims here as he wanders in exile from home. Soon, soon will the Savior in glory appear, and soon will the kingdom come. He is coming, coming, coming soon, I know. Coming back to this earth again, and the weary pilgrim will to glory go when the Savior comes to reign. The mossy old grave where the pilgrim sleeps shall be opened as wide as before. And the millions that sleep in the mighty deep shall live on the earth once more. He is coming, coming, coming soon, I know. Earth again, and the weary pilgrim will to glory go when the Savior comes to reign. They will meet near to part in a happy Eden home, sweet songs of redemption will sing. From the north, from the south, all the ransom shall come and worship our heavenly King. He is coming, he's coming, he's coming soon, I know. Coming back to the earth again. And the weary pilgrim will to glory go when the Savior comes to reign. Hallelujah, amen, hallelujah again. Soon if faithful we all shall be there. Oh, be watchful, be hopeful, be joyful till then, and the crown of bright glory we wear. He is coming, coming, he's coming soon, I know, coming back to this earth again. And the weary pilgrim will to glory go when the Savior comes to reign. Okay, good evening, everyone, and um, hope you all had a wonderful day, and God has brought us safely through midweek, and we thank God for his mercies that are new. Morning, he says, great is his faithfulness, and if we have been um, keeping our eyes on the news, even if we haven't been um, doing that, we just cannot escape the disaster that has taken place in Turkey and northern Syria, and uh, realize um, thousands of people have, you know, lost their lives in just a couple of minutes. And um, these are just reminders that we are living in serious times. We are living in the last days. And Jesus didn't flatter us. He told us that these things would take place um, just before his coming. And uh, Sister White tells us that as we come closer and closer to the end of time, these are going to become more frequent and they are going to become even greater. It's going to involve even greater loss of lives. 
Um, so it behoves us day by day to um, live a life that is committed to Jesus Christ because we realize that we're just here for a short time. Hmm? We're just here for a fleeting moment. But it is in this life that we make the decision about where uh, we are going to spend um, eternity. Um, even at home, um, we were also a little caught up as well too with the, um, the funeral of um, Dr. Honore, uh, the Minnesota Conference President. Just started um, last December, got the appointment, and 59 years old, and went to sleep and didn't wake up. Um, you know, and um, they had three different funerals for him. I think one in Minnesota and two in New York, where he had his final interment. And, you know, his wife said that he wasn't sick. <laughs> he wasn't sick. She just realized that she wasn't getting any, you know, any texts from him or anything like that and asked his children, did you hear from Daddy? They said no. And so they called the vice president for the conference and asked him, did you hear anything from, you know, my husband? He said, no, I haven't heard anything. And so she said, well, when she realized, you know, this is not the normal pattern, and so she sent um, the vice president, you know, over, um, over by his house, you know, to, you know, maybe like after three in the morning, the wife woke him up and said, no, we have to go to check to see what's happening. And when they went there, the door was locked, and they got no response, and so they called the police, and they um, broke through, went in the door, and went upstairs, and saw him, he was sleeping. It was cold. And so when they came back down, you know, she ran upstairs and went and on the phone still with the wife, you know, still on the phone with the wife and the wife, she's a nurse, and she said, um, put your hand on his forehead. And he said, yes, I did. It's cold. Forehead is cold. And um, she realized, you know, um, that was it. And she said, my husband wasn't sick, you know. He just went to sleep and didn't wake up, you know. And so day by day, we, um, we do not know. Um, day by day, we need to make sure that we are living lives that are committed. We are committed to the Lord, but um, with him we have full and eternal life insurance. And that is what we are um, day by day looking forward to, that someday we would um, live with him. Never have to worry about death again. Okay, um, this evening our... Uh, passage of consideration is going to be Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. So we're going to all stand at this time, and we're going to um, read this one together. Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. And we're going to read this one together. Okay, let's go together. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and said unto them, Go ye therefore, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle, and said unto them, Why stand ye here all day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden of the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, 
I do not hunt. Didst not thou agree me for a penny? Take that thine is, and go thy way. I will give unto thys, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eyes evil, because I am good? Verse 16. So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many are called, but few are. Many are called, but few uh, chosen. Let's bow for prayer. Our loving Father and our God, we want to thank you for your words. Lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We pray, O oh Lord, that you might be with us now, that as we delve into this parable, this teaching, that we may draw from it what you will have us. So it may strengthen our walk with you and our appreci appreciation of you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, be seated. Okay, I think that this is a quite a familiar parable, you know, to us. And um, um, this evening we're going to spend a, a few moments to look into this parable and see what Jesus Christ was trying to teach um, in this parable, much like what we did the last time, you know, when I did a prayer meeting with men, where we look at Luke 15. And so we're going to look at this teaching, this parable as well, too. And Jesus himself is speaking, red letters. Um, verse 1, he says, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man, He's a householder, and he went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his um, vineyard. I don't, know, I don't know if this is common here in Tortola, but I know when I was living in Florida, um, this was very common, okay, especially in South Florida. There will be a lot of mainly Mexicans. They are laborers. And they come to a particular spot, and they gather there. And you'll see a pickup um, come up, drive up, and he'll say, six. And whoever the first six is to get in the car, they get a day job. And another pickup would come, and the pickup would say, whatever, or a bus would come and say, ten, I need ten men. And those ten. And that's how they do. Every day they come out just for a day job. At the end of the day, they get paid in cash. Okay? So it seems as though we have something that's very similar here. These are laborers. They are going out. They don't have a, a normal job. They are looking for a day job. And so they come out every morning, early in the morning, 6 o'clock, you know, hoping to meet someone who would, you know, um, gather them into the vineyard. And he said, so here we have the householder, the landowner. He went out early in the morning. He hired the laborers um, for his vineyard. And he agreed with them how much they're going to get, what pay they're going to get. They're going to get a penny, a denarius. Some, some said, some chances said denarius, but a penny basically was a day's pay. Okay, so they're going to get a day pay. Um, so whatever the day pay is for laborer, you know, that's, you know, what they agreed um, on. And he said also, so this is like, maybe you say those persons went out first, like 6 o'clock in the morning. So those he got first, or like, say you call it 6 o'clock in the morning, right? And when he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he says that he went out about the third hour. That will be 9 o'clock. Okay? He went about the third or 9 o'clock. And he see others that were standing idle also in the marketplace. And he said unto them, do what? Go ye also in the vineyard, and whatsoever is what? Right, I will give you. And they went their way. So the second set of men, how much, how much did he promise them? Huh? He didn't promise them anything. He promised them whatever was what? What was the Right. So at least those, those workers who came first, they were promised a day pay. They were promised a, 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 a penny, a day's pay. But those who came in 9 o'clock now, they were, he said, just go, and whatever is right, I'm going to give you. And they, were they happy to do that? Yes, they were happy to do that, and they went, okay? So they went, vineyard. And again, he went out about the sixth hour. So this is midday now, 12 o'clock, okay? And also the ninth hour. That's 3 o'clock, okay, in the afternoon. And he did the same thing. He says, go in my vineyard work. Whatever is right, I'm going I'm to give you that. And about the 11th hour, you know, this is serious now. About the 11th hour, so it's 5 o'clock now in the afternoon. Work day finished 6 o'clock. About the 11th hour, he went out and he found others standing idle and said unto them, why stand ye here, what? 
all the idols. So I mean, these guys have been there from 6 o'clock in the morning. I mean, they didn't give up. They were still hoping that at least something, they'll get something. Five o'clock. Um, you you got to respect them, right? Standing, you say, why standing here all day? Most likely, maybe he saw them when he came to pick up the guys the first time. Because he knew they were there for the all day. Right? He knew that. And he says, why stand ye here all day idle? And they said unto him, because what? No man hath what? Hired us. And so he said unto them, go also in the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall what? Um, that shall receive. And so he said, when even what come, the Lord of the vineyard, verse 8, said unto his steward, call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last to the, um, from the, last to the first. Now, we meet here, um, in this story so far, we have met three surprises. We have met three surprises in this story so far. Okay? Can anyone name, name to me one of the surprises that we have met so far? Something that is surprising. We have three surprises. There are three surprises that we have met so far. Yes. Okay, right. Those who came late got the same wage like... Okay, um, those who came early. What's the other surprise? Uh, what's the other surprise? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the point where all of us have opportunities, but at the appointed time for us individually, that's when we were given the opportunity and we took it. Oh, you're going to application. We're not on the application yet. We're not on the application. We're looking at the story as is. You see what I mean? You're looking at the application. We're not at the application yet. We're looking at the story as the story is told here. Like what is not normal? What is surprising in this story? It's surprising that no matter what time each of them went, right. they were offered the same Okay, okay. Worth. Okay, okay, right. So you're something similar to what... Um, you say, okay, any other surprise? Okay, um, some of them accept, you know, accepted to say that I'm going to work and they don't know what the contract said. <laughs> okay, it says whatever they're going to um, see. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Right. Okay, okay. So unequal pay. Okay, there's unequal pay. Anybody find it strange? Um, anybody find it strange that the landowner is out looking for workers? You know, find it strange that the landowner is out working for workers. Okay. Now, if 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 if, if someone is um, building a house, I'm 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 building a house, right? I'm paying money to build a house. Do I go out work, looking for workers? Huh? Hmm? You sure? Or the contractor does that? Huh? If I'm paying you to build a house, do I go to work looking for the workers? No. Huh? No, but normal thing. If I'm building a house, I can't build. I don't know how to build. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? So in other words, then I'm, I'm, I'm hiring a company and so forth to, I'm hiring Tadman to build for me. So I don't go look for the workers. Who looks for the workers? Right, so he would look for the workers, okay? So here now you find here then that it is not normal to find that the landowner is the one who is looking for a thing because the landowner has what? He has a what? That's right. So the first time you meet the steward is when he, he say the steward is now asked to do what? To pay. It, that was the steward's responsibility. So in other words, it, it would have been the steward's responsibility to go and what? So he's like the contractor then. He should have been out the one, out by the owner of the vineyard is the one that is outside that is looking for um, these, these workers. And he's not just going once, you know, twice, three times, four times, five times. He's going out looking for these, um, okay, in order to look for, for, um, for these, these workers. Okay. Um, so now we come to the time now, and um, we, we said the other surprising thing is that they all got the same, they all got the same pay. Um, they all got the same wage. Okay. Now, let's, let's, um, let's go back to the scripture. I think we ended at verse 8. I think we ended at verse 8. Um, 
Right. So when even was come, sunset now, time for them to go home, the Lord of the vineyard said unto the steward, first time the steward now is appearing now, he said unto the steward, call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning with whom? Beginning with the last. Now is that fear? Huh? Is that fear? I mean, you came last. Do you think that you should be paid first? Huh? Is that fear? Huh? That's not fear. You know, I, I always, I, 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 I always muse at the fact that, especially like, if they say that they have a, a gathering at the school, all the conventions at the school, right? I get there early. So I park right inside, right? The, the schoolyard. Guess who's going to leave last? Yes. Because all those people who come late park behind me. So then afterwards, oh, I got to wait until all those people move so that I could move, I could get out. You see? So it's interesting to see that the, not only is, is he paying them the same, but these guys who just came 5 o'clock, they're getting their pay first. And so the other workers are saying, well, but, but no, if I started working at 6 o'clock in the morning, and then afterwards I realized, I decided, okay, I'm working for a penny, a day's job. Well, if I see the, the bus man paying those who just work for one hour, a, a day pay, no, my heart starts beating fast. I'm excited because what? If they work for one hour and they get a day's pay, me now who work for 12 hours should get what? 12 days pay. You see what I mean? Yes, because they work for 12 hours. They only work for one hour. So in their mind, they're thinking, well, I mean, we, I mean, this is a good boss. This is a good employer because these guys only work for one hour. And they got a whole day's pay, so it means therefore then that I'm going to get, I mean, wow, I'm, I mean, my wife and family going to be happy. It's a big party we have when you're going home. I mean, that's what the expectation, you know, should have been in that regards. But what happened? What did verse 9 say? Huh? What, what should not have been? You, you're not natural. You, 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 huh? What? You see, they were promised a day's pay. Right. Know. The others were not promised anything. Right. You know, so when they, when they get, when those who came in last got their figure, um, those first shouldn't really, should really not get too excited. What? But that's not normal. No, it's, it's not. But remember, it is what you um, agreed to. Yes, but even if you agree to that, if you see the person who came in one hour just get, get a full day's pay, in your mind you're thinking that I'm going to get more than agreed to. In other words, then, you will be thinking if you're working at a job, right, and you realize that those persons who came to work at a job halfway through the year get a full year's bonus, you're going to expect that when your bonus come in, that is what? It's going to be more than those who started. Isn't that natural? Huh? Good. Yes, you'll expect if you work the full year, right? You expect you'll get bo your, your bonus is going to be bigger than those who get what? That them for the work. So in other words, then, so when you see those who came in one hour getting a full day's pay, you're thinking what? It's a bonus they get. That's a bonus because they got more than what? More than what they deserve. When you get more than what you deserve, that's a bonus, right? So it means therefore then that they got a bonus. So when you see something like that, you're thinking in your mind, wow. My boss man in a good mood. Okay. Yes, but yes. So it means therefore then that it means therefore then that for those persons who didn't work a full day, that means the boss man was unfair to them. He gave them too much. He gave them too much. Didn't he give them too much? Those who work for one hour, didn't he give them too much? What? What, what? what kind of people? I've never met people like this in my whole life. So if you work for one hour and you get a full day's pay, didn't you get too much? Oh, you're adding things now. You're adding things. No, we, you, we can't add things. We can't add things to the story. 
They went in the field and they walked the same way like there was all others. Okay? Okay, go ahead, Lisa. Go I, ahead. I wanted to ask why uh -huh. did he why did he decide to pay the last first and the first? That's, it. That, that's a good question. Yes. In other words, and look at it. Look at it now. Look at how the bossman wouldn't have gotten in trouble. Very good question. Look at how the bossman would not have gotten in trouble. All he had to do is pay those persons who came first their penny. They had their pay. They did one. They, they would have what? After they get their money, what? They're gone. And those who came 9 o'clock, he gave them what? And they what? They're gone. And those who got their things about. So the question is then, why would he go? Why would he pay them in the reverse order in which they came? It's, it's got to be that he's trying to tell, give a message to those persons who came earlier on. Is a message trying to tell? Otherwise, the real fair thing to do would have been those persons who came first, pay them first. He would not have been in any trouble because they would have gone already. They wouldn't have been any wiser, except those persons who came later would go and tell them or something like that. But, I mean, they would have, been, they would have gone home to their family. They would have been happy. Wow. I mean, because remember, you know, some people were there all day, so it means that there were some people there who were all and didn't get any job. It's very likely there were people there all day and didn't get a job. So they would have been so happy to go home to their family and say, you know, honey, guess what? I got a full day pay today. You know, we could go right away. You see what I'm saying? They would have had that. So why would he choose to pay them in the reverse order? It got to be that he was trying to send them a message. Okay, where are we? Um, nine? Okay, and when they came that were hired about the 11th hour, they received every man what? A penny. Ten. But when the first came, they what? They suppose that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man what? A penny. And verse 11 says, and when they had received it, they what? They murmured against the good man. I think that's natural. I mean, I wouldn't feel good about it neither. I would have been disappointed. I would have murmured as well too. Okay, and verse 12 says, saying, these last have worked for what? One hour when the sun was cool. They were working when the sun already was about to set. It was cool in the afternoon, five o'clock in the afternoon, cool. Huh? And what? One hour, and thou hast made them what? Equal unto us, which have borne the what? The burden and the what? Heat of the day. So we work, we work longer. The sun was beating down on us for all day. And you are giving these people the same amount of money that we get. Now, was that fear? Was, was that fear? Who, 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 who it wasn't fear to? Who, who it was not fear to? The what? Not the owner. No, nah, not the owner. Did those who came first? No, it was fear to those who came first. They said they were going to work for what? A penny and they got the penny. So wasn't that fear? Yes. So who wasn't it fear to? Those who come last. Those who came last. It wasn't fear to them. The fear thing is that they should get a fraction of the of the day, but they got, they got what? Right? They got the same. So in other words, then we could say then that those persons who came later on, they were overpaid. You would agree with that? Those persons who did not work the full day, they were overpaid. Huh? Wouldn't you say that? Huh? Yes, they were overpaid. Well, I... uh -huh. uh huh. Right. But what the normal rate is? We know what the normal rate from the first guy who came. Right. So if he paid those persons who came later on more than a penny, it means that they were overpaid. If we didn't know what the standard was, we couldn't say that. But we know what the standard is. 
But, but were those persons who came at the beginning, were they underpaid? No. no. They were not underpaid. But those who came afterwards, they were overpaid. Because we know what the day rate is. The day rate is a penny. And they didn't work for the full day, and they got what? And they got a penny. It's still making some people feel uncomfortable. When they were overpaid? Okay, we are on verse what? Verse 13? Yes, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, if you notice that he only promised the first set. Yes. The penny. Mm -hmm. But the others, he didn't promise a penny. He just promised what he think that they deserve. Right. Yes, but at the same time, think about it. At the same time, we know what the standard is. Because he told the first one that, come work for me. The day, you're going to get a penny. You see what I mean? So we know what the standard is. If we didn't have that information, we could have said, well, you know, whatever. But we know what the standard is. We know what the standard pay is. You see what I mean? So because we know what the standard pay is, um, we can understand, therefore, then, why those persons who came in um, were, were complaining. They couldn't complain if he had told all of them, I'm just going to give you what is fair to you. But we know what the standard is. The standard is a penny for a day. And those persons who came later on, they receive more than they actually deserve. You see what I mean? So we have the standard. But I know what you're saying because he didn't, you know, it's not written in the contract. He said, I'm going to give you what I say, think is fair. So I understand what you're saying. But we know what the standard is, right? But he answered one of them and said, friend, I do thee know what? I didn't wrong you. I paid you according to the contract. I didn't wrong you. Didn't you agree with me for what? A penny. And I gave you what? A penny. Um, he said, take that is what? Take that is thine and do what? Go your way. Leave my property. You can see he's kind of upset, right? He said, leave my property. I gave you what's the thing and so forth. You know? I would give unto what? This last even unto thee. And why? Verse 15. Why? Is it, is it not lawful me to, for me to do what? What I will with... So this, this is my money. You can't tell me what to do with my money. Because I said, this is my money. So I can give who I, you know, what I want with, with my money. So, they were overpaid. They got more than they deserve. <laughs> no, not here. No, not here. No, not here. No, not, not, the, not the argument that the, the landowner gave. The landowner didn't say that he was fear in his payment, you know. He didn't say that, you know. The land, he didn't argue from, huh? Right. The, the, the fact is he's saying that I can do what I want with my money. He's not saying that in paying those persons who just work for one hour, a full day pay, that that was fear. So in other words, he's not acting from a, a, a point of saying, well, um, I'm just going to give you what you deserve. He's not acting from a point of justice. He's acting from a point of saying that this is my money and I could do what I want with my money. That is why he's saying so he's not arguing for, from a legal perspective. He's arguing from his own generosity. He's saying that this is my money. Um, I hired you. I paid you what I was supposed to, you know, and, and, and so forth. So now, we see therefore then that those persons who came at the beginning of the day, those persons who came at the beginning of the day, did they get what they deserve? Yes. So it means therefore that the fact that they get what they deserve it means, therefore, then that um, uh, was there, did they get a bonus? Um, so, in other words, as far as they were concerned, um, they worked, they got their pay, they owe nothing what? They owe, no, they, they owe nothing to the boss. You know what I'm saying? They don't owe anything. I work for a full day, I get a day pay, I don't owe the boss anything, I don't have to come tomorrow to work again, and the boss don't owe me anything. I'm clear. I'm Okay. Now, what about those who came later on? Do you think they owe the bus something? Do you think they owe something to the bus? No. no. What kind of people these be at Bellevue? No. Those who came later on, they don't owe, they don't owe gratitude to the bus for getting a whole full day pay when, when they didn't work for the full day? Huh? What? Yes. Even though we might sit down here, it's not fair 
because of the timing and the work that was or was not put in, the agree, an agreement stays an agreement, and it, it, is, it is legal as long as both parties agree. It doesn't matter the circumstances. <laughs> I've never met people like this before. Listen, listen, listen. I don't think you guys are reading the same thing I'm reading. These guys, they, they, didn't, they didn't work. They did not work for the full day. And they got a whole day pay. But don't you think that they owe the boss gratitude for that? Huh? Don't you think they owe thanks and thank you for the boss for giving them more than they deserve? Pastor. Yeah, they owe gratitude. Now, do, 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 do those persons who came in, do those persons who came in at the beginning, do they owe the boss any thank you? What thank you they owe him for? For the what? No, they don't owe him no thank you. The only thing they will owe him for is for hiring them. For, for choosing them. But apart from that, they, 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 they work for their money. And they got their money. They, when, you, when, when you get your paycheck, do you say thank you? You work for that? I <laughs> said you work for that. <laughs> yes. Right. When he gave them the last set who came in, yes. you know, they were out there in the hot sun all day. Who, 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 who? The Who's last that? set. The... No, they were in the marketplace. I'm talking about the last set that he picked up. When he went back, right. he went back and he found them that time in the evening, yes. the 11th hour. Right. So they were out there looking for job, um, I mean, in the hot sun all day. No, all no, they were not, I don't believe they were in the hot sun. <laughs> because I said they were in the marketplace. <laughs> They were in the marketplace because, no, why I say that is that I don't think they were in the hot sun because if they were in the hot sun, those persons who were working all day would not say we were in the hot sun all day. They know where they came from because all of them came from the same place, you know. So it got to be that those persons who were working on the field know that those guys were under some kind of shade waiting. Otherwise, they would have said we have been in the hot sun all day. You see what I mean? Because they were at the same place as well, too. You well, see the, what thing, the thing is, the day's pay is a penny. Yes. So... If you work one hour or two hours, is the day pay still? Right. So is the penny? Is the penny for a day pay? No, no, no. So Why you do you work think? A half hour is still the penny. It's still the penny. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, no, no. Look at this. One no, look at this. In the day. Uh -huh. One minute in the day. Yes. Is still the day. Okay. Now let's look at this. Let's look at this. Why do you think those persons who came late? Why do you think the master told them? That I'm going to give you what, what, whatever is right. Why do you think he told them that? What? No, 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 no. It can't be that. Because, because you, look at it. Look at it. In other words, then, in other words, then let, let us say that I'm a laborer. I'm, I'm a laborer working at a construction. A laborer get what? $100 a, a, a day? Say $100 a day. A laborer, come on, laborer. Say I get $100 a day. Okay? Now, if I come to work for you and I come on time and work for the full hours um, and so forth, I don't, have to, uh, I don't have to negotiate anything with you. I know that's $100. But if I come halfway through the day and the boss man tell me, don't worry about it, I'm going to give you what is right. What I mean, what, 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 I, what he's trying to communicate to me is that don't, have to, don't let us calculate it right now. I will calculate it later on and give you how much you're supposed to be, maybe according to the number of hours that you work. That's how I interpret that. Because if you came at the beginning of the day, you know you got a penny. But because you came late, that is why the boss man have to tell you, don't let us work it out right now. Just know I'm going to give you what is right. No, it means therefore then that, it means therefore then that those persons who came late, they must have had faith and confidence in the landowner. Would you agree with that? Because they didn't know what they're going to get. So he could have given them anything because at the end of the day, he could have said, I say, I'm going to give anything on the right. So he could have given them maybe two farthing or a farthing or whatever and so forth. You see what I mean? So, they, they, so in other words, then they had, those persons who came late, they had confidence and faith in the boss that they were going to be, that he, they, that he was going to be fair to them. But the very fact he tell them, I'm going to the vineyard, I'm going to give you whatever is right. It means therefore then that he had to do some calculation. You know, to determine how much they deserve and how much they got. So those persons who came late, we can say that they basically had more faith in the landowner than those persons who came at the beginning. 
of the day because those who came at the beginning of the day, they had a written down contract, a clear contract. Those persons didn't know how much money they were going to get at the end of the day. You know, so they had more faith in that regard, yes. And they, and, and they had to trust that he was going to be fair to them in that regard, yes. yes, yes. That's kind of what I was saying earlier. Uh, yeah. Maybe he saw more um, value in those people that he brought late. But my question is... I'm, yeah, but look, but look... Okay, go ahead. I'm wondering... Yes. Why didn't he pick all of them up at the same point? appointed time mm -hmm. because it's not the laborers fault that they got there at the hour they got there yes. you know? they were picked up at that time yes so it's not really their fault okay um I, 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 and we don't know why the story doesn't tell us why he picks them up at different um time um but to me from what the story is saying it appears as though he went and he got a few of the laborers maybe he was thinking that there were other employers that were going to come and pick up the rest that's the sense i get because when he came out later on, he was surprised that they were still there waiting. To me, it, it, it appears as though he was surprised that other employers hadn't employed them. You see what I mean? So in other words, if there are a group of workers that are there, and I have some job to do, and I come pick five guys to, to, to work for me, and then afterwards, when I come back, I realize that there are other guys there. Still, the very fact that I'm surprised that they are still there standing and waiting, most likely I'm thinking that some other persons would have you know, would have come and picked them up. So, so it appears as though then that the, the, and the way in which he paid them, you can see therefore then that this landowner is trying to help them out. He's not just, he's not just, he, he, he wants to help. He has compassion. Because he comes and he says, you mean you guys have been waiting all day? Come, for the last hour. That's compassion. He didn't have to, he, he didn't have to hire them just for one hour, but you can still end up paying them. So you could see therefore then that the landowner has a, a heart of compassion. He's sorry for these people then. He's sorry for these workers. And he wants to, 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 to help them out. I yes. also believe that he was trying to teach the first person who we hired yes. a lesson. Yes. I believe that. Yes. And that's why we were saying that's, the, that's why he paid them in that, um, that's why he paid them in, um, in that, that order. Okay. Now let's go to the application now, because this is a parable, and parable has, you know, a story and has an application, and, um, you know, and, and so forth. Remember last time we looked at the parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the two boys, um, you know, as well too. So, who, who represents um, those who came at the six, who came early in the morning and worked for the whole day and, and get their penny? Um, who, who, who does that group of people represent? You could say the Jews... The Pharisees, I mean, they, they may be those who have been following Christ for a long time. And, um, but you can see here that these are people who, they do not recognize the grace of God. They, they feel as though, well, the blessings I get from God and my salvation I deserve. Because I work for, so it's not words like Pharisees then, the Pharisees. We are Abraham's seed, we deserve this. So you're not doing anything for us. You know, there's nothing you're doing for us. And so these are the laborers who came from the, you know, from the beginning. We have been, you know, walking, we're born into this thing, we have been living in this thing and so forth, and therefore we deserve this thing. And so we can see therefore then that the laborers, them that came afterwards, are, are those people, that, they are like the brands that have been plucked out of the fire. And they realize therefore then that, wow, we don't deserve this, but they are receiving the same pay, like even those persons who came in at the beginning. So in other words then, these are like the disciples who have been following Jesus all the time, those who came the last hour, like the thief on the cross, who died on the cross. And it seems as though Jesus is here teaching, the par teaching in this parable that they're going to save the same eternal life. They're going to see receive the same um, salvation. Now, in, in this parable as well, too, it is showing us, and, and let me ask you the question again, too. Is grace fear? Think about it. Think about it. Is grace fear? Huh? Huh? Is grace fear? No, we don't deserve it. What is fear is what I deserve. I mean, those persons who came at the beginning of the day, did they need any grace? No. Because they what? They work for what? They work for the full day. But those persons who came in later on, they got what? They got grace. 
So we see therefore then that grace is not fear. Justice is fear. The wages of sin is death. So I deserve to die and you deserve to die. So in other words, then God's grace comes to us. And it means therefore then that what? That grace that comes to us is what? It's not fear. In other words then, a lot of times, last time I spoke about the prodigal son. Prodigal, you know what prodigal means? Prodigal means wasteful. Well, the story is not only about the prodigal son, it's also about the prodigal father. Because after the father had given him what he deserved, he still came back home, and the father still welcomed him back home. Why are you coming back home for when I gave you everything that I'm supposed to be giving you? You're gone with your inheritance. So you see, therefore, then that the father is what? Prodigal, is wasteful. That's why the son was what? The son was upset. So the son, in the parable of the, of, um, the, the, the prodigal son, the one who stayed at home, is like the one who came to work when? First. And he tell his father, what's going on here? I've been working what? All day in the hot sun. And you mean that you're treating my brother who wastes all that money? You're treating him like what? Huh? Giving him a party? And you never even give me what? Even give me a party? So you can see, therefore, then you see when you compare this, the, 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 the parable of the prodigal son with, with this parable as well, too, you can see, therefore, then how the son who stayed at home fits in with those persons who came to work at the beginning and those, and, you know, and those who came at the end represents the prodigal son who wasteful and came back home. So we see, therefore, then that this is a story about grace. It's a story about God's grace. It's a story how God gives us more than we deserve. That's why the psalmist says, if you were to count sin, who would stand? So you and I are only standing here tonight, only because of what? God's grace. God has given us more than we deserve. More than we deserve. We came to work the last hour, but we're still receiving the penny. And so we see, therefore, then, and so the only way in which God defends himself, notice, he says, you can't be upset with me. It's my money. It's my love. I could bestow my love on whom I want to bestow my love. It is my grace. I could bestow my grace on whom I want to. He doesn't try to defend himself. Do you remember when Joshua the high priest was standing, uh, um, you know, before, before God and he had a the dirty garment and Satan was there what? Satan was there to accuse him. Huh? And, and, and he says what? Isn't this a what? Isn't this a what? A brand what? Plucked out the fire. He said, take off his clothes. Dirty clothes. I put a mite on his head. Put clean in other words, then, in other words, then here we find therefore then that God did not argue with Satan. Because what? Why didn't argue with Satan? Because Satan was right. He couldn't argue with him. As far as concerned, we rightfully belong to whom? We belong to be him. You see? So that is why Jesus had to plead what? His blood, his grace, and put his robe upon us. So in other words, then we have not been. You would think that we're working all day. No, we ain't working all day. We just came in at the last hour. Some of us came 9 o'clock, some came 12, some came 5 o'clock. But we thank God with what? We thank God for what? His grace. Those persons who work all day, they're not going to be in the kingdom because they feel what? They feel they deserve. Um, and if you feel as though you deserve salvation, you don't, you don't deserve it. So you think that he should pick them up the next day to hire them? You think they're going to come back to work in his field again? No. Why? Because they said this boss man is too kind. They said we can't work for this man again. He is what? Too kind. There are some people who reject salvation because they cannot accept the fact that, wow, God will really forgive me? Will really forgive me? Let me close up with this. Let me close up with this. I had a student when I was to teach high school many years ago. I had a student, Adonis. And um, she came uh, Monday morning to school. She was in my farm, farm, farm room. So they mark it register and stuff. I realized, you know, she looked really sad and so forth. And so afterwards, I say, I say, Adonis, I realize you have tears in your eyes, you're crying and so forth. I say, what's going on? What's happening? Um, she said, Mr. Edwards, um, my grandfather died yesterday. I say, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that and things and so forth. And, so forth. and she said, I was by his bedside. And I was saying, Grandpa, pray. Pray. Pray that God would act. Pray that God would forgive you of your sins. She was a Christian. Not an Adventist, but she was a Christian. He said, pray that God would forgive you of your sins and so forth. Grandpa, pray. And after a while, she, he, he, he talked to her and he said, he said, I'm sorry, it's too late. 
He said, no use to pray now. He said, no use to pray now. He said, it's too late. No use to pray now. A lot of times people think that the thief on the cross, the confession that the thief on the cross make was easy. That wasn't easy. Because there are people who will have lived their life of sin and you're with them in the hospital. And they, they, they feel, no, God can't be so good to forgive me. I don't deserve this. And they don't, ac and they don't, accept, that sal they don't accept that salvation. There are some people who turn away from God because they think that God is too good. And that's the devil, that's the trick of the devil. To deceive people who think that what? That's what, also, that's what those persons who came in at the beginning, they were upset about. They were upset that the bossman was so good. Could you imagine that? They are upset. And so my dear friends, this evening we see therefore that this is a message, is a parable of God's grace. That it doesn't matter what hour we come in, doesn't matter what hour we come in and so forth, we are going to receive the same robe of salvation. Isn't God good? So we don't complain about him, right? We don't complain about him. We thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his mercies. You ever heard about it? Surprises in heaven, right? First surprise, you're going to be surprised. You're there. And some, then you're going to surprise that some people who think will be there, not there. And some people you're sure not going to make it, they're going to be there. You see what I'm saying? And that is all about what? It is all about God's grace. The landowner who represents God says, it is my money. Huh? It's my grace. I have the right to give my grace to whomever I will. And who will give it grace for? Anybody who would what? Accept it. And anyone who would, you know, and whoever shall receive it. And everyone receive it. Okay, let's come in the middle and form a circle. We want to pray and thank God for his grace before we sing 109 to close off. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount of court, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sins. Sin and despair like the sea with gold, trapped in the soul with infinite loss. Grace that is greater, yes, grace untold. Points to the refuge of mighty cross. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that is greater than all our sins. Marvelous, infinite grace. Matchless grace freely bestowed on all who believe. My God, I long to see His face. Will you this moment His grace receive? Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God. That is greater than all our sins. Our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen.